Hello, good evening, beauty. Hello, bow tie. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> Everything's going well. It's so nice to see you. My goodness, this is our inaugural uh, episode, right? Ah, how exciting. I'm kind of excited about it, too. But we picked a very, what, dreary topic, would you say? Yeah, um, it's a little bit it's a little bit serious. Um, police militarization is kind of um, a hot topic, but it's never a, a delightful one to discuss, I don't think. It isn't, but you know, I read an article the other day in which I speculated that the average uh, member of the bourgeoisie has now developed a certain skepticism about the police that hadn't been there, say, five, ten years ago. Do you agree with that? Um, I think that a lot of people are starting to see it as a very serious issue. And um, I know that there were a lot of people saying that libertarians were silent on Ferguson, but we've been talking about this for how many years? You know, it's not just an issue of of Ferguson. I mean, this goes on every single day and it doesn't get the news coverage like Ferguson did. I, I read somewhere that there's something like one cop killing or killing of a cop, a killing by a cop of, of an unarmed person like every day. Did you read that statistic? I think it was in Dan Beer's article. Um, yeah, apparently you are more likely to be killed by a police officer than um, a terrorist or a whole list of other fun things, which is, um, um, it's kind of one of the most tragic things that I can think of in the U.S. today because the police are supposed to be there to protect and serve, not harass and assault and kill you. So I remember, and I wonder if you remember this too, but uh, I remember a time when, when people had a generally favorable view towards the police. I mean, not too long ago, really. Um, certainly when I, when I was growing up, you would never think of doubting the police at all. And certainly no like conservative would. And the fact that the police were, re there's such high regard for the police that they're seen as like the thin blue line between like chaos and civilization. Um, that seems to be shifting a little bit. Do you, do you have a memory of this also? Um, I know that, you know, when you look back on, you know, the way that people viewed the police in the 50s and the 60s and the videos and the movies, you know, police were always seen favorably and it's not like that anymore. And, you know, I was thinking about, so how do we fix this? You know, we can talk about it, we can bitch about it all day long, but how do we fix it? And so I think there's three ways to go about it. Um, the first one I would say is education. Um, I think we have to change the way that people view laws in general. We have to change the way that people view punishment for laws. So we have to distinguish between vices and actual crimes and show people that the police shouldn't be enforcing laws, that there shouldn't even be laws unless it's a law about protecting someone's life, liberty, or property. Right. Ba Bastiat had some remark in the law, in his book, The Law, that said, if you want the law to be respected, you have to make it respectable. Yes. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like any of our, very many of our laws are respectable at all. And um, another way that the city council in California actually gave their local police force 60 days to get rid of one of their tanks. So that's very encouraging. There was a petition um, passed around by members of the community um, and they petitioned their city council to get this tank removed. And so the city council moved on it. So I think that if we have more libertarians running for local positions, I think that would be fantastic. More local action. Um, yeah, I'm a little skeptical of these Obama administration, not just a little skeptical, but I saw that there was a review now. The Obama administration is like having second thoughts about all the military equipment they've sent out and they're taking a study. I guess I'm not very optimistic anything is going to come of that. Yeah, so the, the program that authorizes that gets reauthorized every year. It's um, the Department of, of Defense 1033, and it's in the NDAA. Um, so I would love to see a list of every single congressman that has authorized that. I think that's a good place to start on the federal level, but there's also stuff that people can do on the local level as far as city councils go. Yeah, and what's your third idea? Well, it was education, 
local politics and then federal politics. And I mean, I know that some people are very opposed to political um, action at all, but those people could definitely help with education on all three levels. That would be great. One thing that I've noticed over the last several years is the rise of sort of pl private policing. Uh, so instead of depending uh, on your community, uh, depending on the police to defend your community, you just make a contract with some of these, these private uh, police who are much more consumer friendly, uh, far less willing to engage in these sort of extremist tactics. Um, all of that sounds really good. The only thing that's a little bit troubling about it is that such services are really today only available for the rich, I mean, let's face it. Yeah, um, that's very true. My, my city councilman, um, he was trying to privatize the, the police here and um, because the police ended up beating some guy severely and so he spoke out about it and now they're suing him so he's going through a lot of issues but he's doing the best that he can and I think that's fantastic um, he's an anarchist he doesn't really know he's an anarchist but he's getting there oh that's everyone I think everybody's <laughs> an anarchist they just don't know it yet yeah. <laughs> no but you know you have to I think you make a good point we have to support these whistleblowers and these people that are willing to depart from uh, the ethos of the department my good friend Justin Hanners you know right here in my hometown uh, kind of blew the whistle on, on the tactics of the police here and uh, he's paid a very serious price you know of course he was fired from the department he's he sued for wrong wrongful firing the court threw out his his suit you know um, he's had to find another line of work he's paid a pretty heavy uh, price for that so uh, and I suppose these people like this are all over the country they definitely deserve our support don't you think Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I would love to see more of them because right now I, I don't see many. Um, I know that Radley Balco is, he's highlighted like two police officers who use his book on uh, police militarization like a Bible, which I think is fantastic, but there's not enough yet and there needs to be more. Also, you know, Marianne, I'm really hoping um, for my part that we're going to get more of a sympathy on the part of the sort of um, white middle class for the plight of many of the uh, blacks and, and, and cities who are, who are subjected to these kinds of treatments and if we can get kind of a coming together of a mutual interest in that respect to, to oppose these, these regimes that are exploiting everyone, uh, that could, it seems to me, be like a, an important political turning point. Yeah, I think the first step, we have to kill this idea that the police have special rights or, you know, they can get away with things that normal people can't. If I go and I choke somebody out or I beat them to death and they're already subdued, I go to jail. Yeah. That needs to happen for everyone. We have to, yeah. we have to just destroy this idea that the police are immune to the laws that everyone else has to follow. Yeah, and once again, I've always returned to Bastiat's uh, amazing monograph on this. You know, uh, the state should be subjected to the laws that they hold us accountable to. You know, at the very least, that's a good wow. beginning. I think we'd see reform very quickly if that were actually the case. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Marianne, for your always wonderful insights. It's been a pleasure, Jeffrey. Look forward to our next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>